listen, they don't mess around let me on a Zenith podcast. Mm-hmm. Talk that talk, George. They don't mess around let me on a Zenith podcast. It's time to turn up a notch. It's big dog season. Lawrence, they going to feel me. Turn them up. Big dog. Pressure. Yeah, that's real. Now tuned in to the Zenith. to another episode of the Xena Podcast. First thing first, let's uh, get things in order. I need you to subscribe, um, like, comment, share, everything about this video, and stay tuned to more content we got coming out on the Xena Podcast. We're going to be hit y'all with, hitting y'all with some great, great interviews. But today, this is not even an interview. This is a moment. Yes, sir. This is a moment. I'm going to say this is a moment because we got the hottest of a common motivational speaker in the world. Talk that talk, George. This dude blazing. Talk that talk, George. 10, 15,000 followers weekly. Yes, sir. Um, You heard this voice. If you ain't heard it, you're going to hear it today. You're going to hear more. You're going to hear more and more and more and more and more. And sometimes when I address people, I (laughs) I always say, what's up, big dog? But today we got the big dog. Yes, sir. The big dog. George White, the speaker. Turn him up, George. What's My up, brother. man? Appreciate it. What's happening? Appreciate it, Lauren, for having me, man. Appreciate it for having me, man. Big dog. Appreciate it for having me, man. All right, cool. So, look, this thing started, I'm going to say, we, never, we was talking about this the other day going on about uh, two years ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, you hit me in my DM. I was like, mm-hmm. hey, asking if I wanted to collab or go live. And I think we ended up doing the first. I, don't, I can't remember what we talked about, but it's just probably about motivating people. Yep. We talked about it on Clubhouse. And man, it was cool, and we've been locked in ever since. Mm-hmm. So now, I think even back then, the conversation we had on the phone right after, yeah, he was like, "Dog, Lawrence, I'm gonna take this. Uh, I'm gonna be the biggest motivational speaker in the world." I called it. He called it. Now, two years later, man, you up to about I think it was twelve thousand followers. Then mm-hmm. you up to close to two hundred thousand yes, followers sir. now. Yes, sir. Um, man, I just want to say, you know, give your flowers now. Kudos yes, to sir. the success now and that that we know is to come. Mm-hmm. Uh, that I know is going to come, that you that you spoken into existence and continue to speak into existence every day, and uh, man, I'm just excited. So why I'm excited, I'm gonna say why I'm thankful, mm-hmm. and I want to pre- say I'm appreciative of you is that this is the first time somebody mm-hmm. really sat down and interviewed mm-hmm. you, and man, you allowed me to do it, bro. And man, like I said, thank you. For it's that. all good. Thank bro. you for that. Thank you for that. You know what be right. You know I uh, want you to be the first. I want y'all to get that talk, that you know talk you know with saying? with Lawrence. So, so today was a, um another day at first. We talk about it too because mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. you know you flew in this morning, mm-hmm. and bro, you had your you had your first like fan meet and greet mm-hmm. here. How man, was that was that? lit. How man, was that was that? listen. That was lit. Man, you know what touched me is when that uh, young lady said she drove she drove five hours. From yeah. what, Salem, North Carolina? Winston, Salem, North Carolina to Atlanta. It's your five hours. Man, that's, glory be to the most high. That ain't me. That's God. And it's more of an honor than anything just to be able to live the life that you manifested. Like I, like you said, I told you two years ago, like, man, listen, my voice going to touch the world. And, you know, I focus on being authentic. So I had my first meet and greet today, having all these people come show love. Uh, some different, you know, people driving an hour away. Had one gentleman say, hey, he went and borrowed his Annie car, gave her $50, yeah. make sure he showed up today. You know, that's love and respect, man. So I appreciate that. Why do why you think it is everybody's so drawn to you? I, I, I know why, but I'm interested to see what you're going to say, though. Because I think people really want to, people gravitate and relate to that real, you know. People love for people speaking to their life. You know, when I say talk that talk or big dog season, that's affirmation. Like I was uh, telling that gentleman earlier today, man, uh, when I look in the mirror, when I say big dog, I feel like I can't be defeated. I can't be destroyed. You know, I walk like this. I talk like this. And it'll be a cold day in hell for anybody to destroy me. Because I know that the enemy will try to kill, steal, and destroy. So if I speak life into myself, the enemy got to go back to the pit of hell. Right. And I'm showing people how you can overcome. I'm showing people how you can be humble and apply pressure at the same time. I'm showing people what to watch out for. I'm showing people how to be authentic. Don't never change. Don't be, be who you are and not what the world wants you to be. 
All right, now hold on. Before you, before you get too excited, mm. let's start. Let's, 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 let's get the people get to know you for a second. Mm. So, segment one of the podcast is testimony. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you know, I know a little bit about you, but I learned a few things about you today by sitting in the background, mm-hmm. cool, and listen, listening to you. I actually talked to that young lady you was, you was telling me about. Mm-hmm. So, if I asked you, who is George White the speaker? What you would say? George White the speaker is somebody who has a powerful, I'm talking about a powerful testimony. Uh, a person that people doubted, you know, uh, that black sheep of the family, uh, the person who, who battled with addiction, alcoholism, um, sex, um, dishonesty, you know, somebody who just was broken and trying to pick up the pieces. You know, sometimes we got we to gotta live and deal the hand that was dealt us, man. And I feel like I made excuses for a lot of things that wasn't my fault. And I feel like I had to pick up the pieces for the thing that wasn't my fault. And I lost who I was. And when you, when you lose who you are, you start be trying to come with what the world wants you to be. And you forget what you need. You need you. Yeah. And when I finally surrendered, man, when I finally gave my life to God, that's when I really became a big dog, which allowed me to have a wife, have a kid, for me to uh, allow everything in my life to manifest, man. And I feel like life is just, I'm in a season where things about to shift. It's been shifting. Now it's really shifting, and it's because of the things I committed to in 2014 to surrender and not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of my mind. Okay. Well, and now I'm big dog, you feel okay, me? Okay, Romans 12, too. That's <laughs> yep. my, fa- that's Roman my 12 favorite too. Yeah. That's my favorite verse, Romans yeah. 12, too. So look, we done have people come on and they really, really, I force them to open up. Mm-hmm. They give me an answer, and if it's too PC, I make them answer it again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about before you even got – um. <clears throat> I say before you even got to the point of being a speaker, before you, you know, before the football career that got derailed, mm-hmm. you know, let everybody know, um, like, kind of some of the things that you got into, or that you was into growing up in Dallas. You know, actually, East Texas. Okay. Yeah, I grew up in Palestine. Um, you know, I grew up in a in a family of three. I'm the youngest. Uh, we grew up in poverty. When I say poverty, like poverty stricken situation where. We had no windows. We lived in a trailer house with no windows. You know, um, I, I see my first crack here at the age of four. I see where a crack a crack rock was at the age of four. You know, uh, my mama got abused uh, in each and every way. Um, you know, it was times in my life where I felt like, why me? Why we gotta go through the pain and suffering? You know, why we gotta feel like we alone? Why we gotta go through? Why we gotta struggle? You seen everybody in your class got everything that you want, so. When you when you grow up in a such a way, you you become a product of your environment, you know. So I started smoking at the age of ninth grade. I started breaking into things at the age of sixth grade because that was normal, yeah. not because I was trying to be somebody was I wasn't. That was what the next cat was doing, you know, what I'm saying. So when we moved to the project my fifth grade year. I had to fit in. I had to be, you know, my environment was. So and I think I never really shook back until I had to shake back. That's a difference. Listen to me. I never shook back until I had to shake back. When you have to shake back, I mean, you're at your bottom. You got to go to the main source, with God, which is God. Mm-hmm. And that what got me here today and which allowed me to overcome. So that, did you challenge all that aggression to the game of football? And I, cha- I challenged, all that, challenged all that aggression to life, period. Yeah. Man, um, those who try to love me couldn't love me. I was a commitment shot because I didn't know what was really fabricated. You can tell me that you love me, but you got to show me. Then nine times out of ten, even if you show me, I didn't believe it. Right. So the love I did have for it was sports and football. It took me away from reality. You know, I'm on the field. I can jump high, I can catch, hands big. It didn't took me away from, I felt safe. I felt safe in a way where um, I didn't feel judged. Um, I didn't feel vulnerable. I didn't feel alone. I didn't feel pain. But I did want to call pain the havoc on the field, you know, and I think it would allow me to be great. So, I. I know, uh, hey, I want to say the first, second time, maybe the second time. No, actually, you, you were pretty transparent the first mm-hmm. time we met. So the first time, the first time we talked, you told me that you, you actually earned a scholarship, mm-hmm. but you lost it. Mm-hmm. So about twelfth grade year, um, let's go before the scholarship. Let's go when I remember I was in class, man. Uh, my run back at the time, and our center, he was like, man, a couple colleges, I think of Baylor, Texas A&M, TCU. That came to the school, you know, I spoke to coach. Like, man, I want to speak to George, but he's like, yeah, George's a good player. He'll make plays for you. He's a heck of a football player. 
but he he dumb as a box of rocks. When I heard that, it hit me. It hurt me, but I really couldn't be mad because the truth. I didn't imply myself in class. You know, you can't you can't you can't really be mad for something you're not applying. So when he told me that, like, dang, after all the work I put in, you know, I ain't missed no game. I had dislocated fingers. I done broke my uh, ankle. You know, but I still play. You know, uh, but it go to show you that when you put your hopes and dreams in somebody else's hand, then it's up to them how far you gonna go. Yeah. Or you got you got to keep the dreams and hope in your hand. But me and my mom met with Texas Southern University. Um, you know, they gave me a couple options because uh, my GPA and my SAT score didn't didn't match up right. So I had two options. I could have sat out a whole year and took my SAT again to score high, or I could go to a JUCO and get my grades up, then yeah. transfer on a yeah. scholarship. So uh, I decided to do the JUCO route. After being in college for one for one month, I decided I didn't want to play sports no more, man. I just want to be free. That's why I thought I wanted at the moment, but I really didn't. I think I was just in love at the time, so I didn't want to put that work in no more. Cause I played sports all year round. I was just lo- I, I was lost, man, yeah. and. When you lost, you make bad decisions. So once once the game was gone, you decided you didn't want to play. I mean, what was what did life look like? Like what, what was you doing? Same thing I was doing. When I was in high school in the streets, in the street. uh, clubbing, um, drinking, partying, uh, angry, aggressive, uh, manip- manipulative, and because of that's why I say, man, we got to speak life into these, our brothers, man, our kids. If they are damaged. They gonna damage other people, hurt people, hurt people. Uh, when you are discombobulated mentally, everything you touch or be around is gonna be destroyed. And unintentionally, unintentionally, I feel like I was destroying everything around me, which allowed me to put myself. I was setting myself so far back that it was gonna take five, ten years to get out of. But by the grace of God, man, me getting saved and giving my life to Christ at the age of 21, it, I, I was stubborn. The person I was with at the time, my high school sweetheart. She kept pushing me, pushing me, said, man, get your life, get your life to God, get saved, come to church. I kept putting it off, kept putting it off until one day, I don't know why I said yes. And I said yes and I got saved, man. But my life didn't change there. My life changed when I finally made a decision to fully surrender. You know what, that's that's one of the things, I think that's my biggest, that's like my biggest sticking point, like when I'm talking to people now, it's like sometimes in life, like, the easiest thing to do mm-hmm. is the hardest thing to do, mm-hmm. and the hardest thing to do is the easiest thing, thing to do. Mm-hmm. Like people understand, like that path you got, like once you get that that direction, you find your purpose from mm-hmm. the man upstairs, and you walking in it. They don't don't really realize how easy mm-hmm. and how how easy it is after mm-hmm. that. And I mean, I'm not a lot, really. I can't really say it. I can't say it another way, mm-hmm. man. Things just happen for you. Things just click. Mm-hmm. Things don't just happen out of nowhere. It's divine. Like mm-hmm. that's the order. That's how things go. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, biggest thing uh, with George said, man. Once you find your purpose, once it's given to you, mm-hmm. walk in it. Don't be scared. Uh, when the when the light turn green, don't be looking around. Hit the gas and go 100 miles mm-hmm. out. All gas, no brakes. So, uh, so how how did street dude eventually get into corporate America? Uh, like I say first, surrender, confess, and give your life to God, man. And then put yourself around the right people, you know. Yeah. What happened to me is meet my wife, and okay. she had two kids. That's, you know, I became a father while I had no father, and they tr- she trusted me with her kids. She trusted me with her life. So I wanted to be better because I, she, I felt something hurt I never felt before. She, she seen something in me that she trusted. So I just work on how to speak better, how to carry myself better, how to be more consistent, how to be more driven, motivated, how to be, uh, uh, well equipped in different areas I wasn't well equipped before I just turned it on man and I became something that I thought I couldn't be that's another thing I never thought I'd be as intelligent I never do because I never applied myself yeah when you apply something when you start perfecting your craft adding stuff into your arsenal and start applying stuff you you will see that you always been intelligent you never just give yourself 120 110 percent so that allowed me to step into corporate world that allowed me to uh, step into rooms that People say I wasn't qualified for. But I tell people, degrees open doors, but God opened elevators. So I was able to do what people, it took people 15 years to do in the corporate where I only did it in four or five years, which allowed me to buy this house for my family, which allowed me to put myself in a better position. But the most important important thing about working in a corporate office 
it taught me different fundamentals that I'm utilizing right now for myself. So I learned how to utilize my resources to get to the main source. I start that with uh, give myself to God. I would utilize my resources, the Bible, praying, uh, confessing, surrendering. Then I went to the main source with God in a corporate office. I utilize my resources to get to my main source. Cause not everybody who, not everybody who has skill set can produce. And, you know, you might have the skill set, but I had the wheel set. So when people was leaving right at four o'clock to go home, I stay at work for an extra hour and learn the policy. People not willing to do the small thing. That which allowed me to advance and learn more and learn how to equip myself mentally and be better at what I can. So I'm blessed and humble for that opportunity, which allowed me to be the big dog right now. It gave me this confidence I never knew I had. So at what point, when I know one of those days, mm -hmm. one of those days you were sitting at that desk and you realized you had something to say. Well, I'm sure you probably always had something mm -hmm. to say, but you had something to say you wanted to share with the world. When that, what day did that click for you? To be honest with you, I can't say I know what day, but I feel like it was all my, always my calling. Yeah. Ever since I was a little pup, uh, I had an older soul, and well, really toward 2017, 18, I was like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this, and um, and I did it. And if I never took that chance, I'm gonna tell you something. It's imperative, y'all listen to me. It's imperative to have someone who believes in you. My wife really helped me make the decision. Say, look. Do what God call you. Do what God calling you to do. Because I can yeah. see the passion in your eyes. Because I was really helping people at work. I was motivating people at work. I said, you know what? Let me try to do this on my own outside of work. And I kept doing it. I went and bought my camera. I started recording videos in 2018, and it took off from there. I mean, we man, we was already what three years in. You was already three, two, two years in. So years yeah, in? Two, about, yeah, yeah. We met in 2021. 2021. So I was already 19, 20, about three years in. Yeah. Okay, so. Another question. So, a lot of, like one of the one of the uh, young ladies that came to the meet and greet today was mm -hmm. like, everybody always asks, like, what do I do? How do I get started? Of course, I told her, like, Shorty, you just got to jump. Mm -hmm. Like, you got to do it. Mm -hmm. But like, what would you say to the person who they have something to say? You know, they putting content mm -hmm. out, but it's really not getting traction. Mm -hmm. You know, tell them about their beginning journey before someone may actually may actually find you and how they stay the course. Mm -hmm. You know. How to stay motivated doing it. I was speaking about the triple C's and I live with this. Uh, consistency, creative, and confidence. If you if you confident, then you are creative. If you are creative, then you are consistent. If you are consistent, then you are creative. If you are creative, then you are confident. That's the only thing you need to know. Consistency, creative, and confidence. If you don't have those three, you're not going to get started. And sometimes you might get started. You might quit within the first week because you're not getting the traction that you wanted. Listen. Life is a marathon, nothing's a race. You can't call yourself a big dog, you're not doing big dog stuff. Because a lot of stuff I'm trying to come up, come up against you when you're really in your purpose. If you, if you were doing something you didn't love, nothing would happen. But since you're doing something you love, things not gonna always go in your favor. It wants you to quit, it wants you to give up. But you just gotta keep pushing and know that this is your purpose, this is your calling, execute to your highest ability. And you're gonna, you're gonna reap the results. Just don't give up. Okay, so now, if somebody scroll way back, now you got mm -hmm. you got to look at this page. You got a lot of videos. You scroll way back, they can see the mm -hmm. they can see mm -hmm. the evolution of your content from when you first started. So I was, now it's looking more professional. Mm -hmm. Now it's looking more refined. Mm -hmm. The editing is crisp. Like the movement on it, mm -hmm. I ain't gonna give away a secret. But you see how <laughs> he move. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah he move like that. So talk about you know just the, the building blocks of that. How you? How, well, not without giving, not mm. without giving away, not without giving away everything, but like some of the things you do, how you critique yourself, the investment in your equipment, mm -hmm. uh, the people you met, how you learn, you know, mm -hmm. tips and tricks you might have stole from somebody mm -hmm. or got, you know, got got um no tutelage on. Like, talk about that a little bit. First, uh, I needed patience. I mean, I was, I was too impatient, and that would cause me not to be where I wanted to be. So I had to work on how to be patient. Uh, second thing is continue to perfect my craft. Uh, I'm my biggest critic, man. I continue to critique myself. How can I improve? I never like being stagnant. I want no individual that if I feel stuck, I get frustrated. And not all frustration is bad. I mean, you, you, you kind of being hard on yourself to get to the highest level. But I kept, you know, I learned how to do everything on my own, how to make my video, how to edit my video, which make everything more intentional. 
if I'm if I'm making a video and editing the video, I'm gonna see everything that I need to see because I'm intentional with what I'm doing. So the more consistent uh, I was doing, uh, being and making video, putting out content, the more I start improving. The more I start improving, I start building more relationships, and I start learning what they know. See, I'm the type of person I get what somebody else know, I get from, and I get what I know for myself, and I put it in my arsenal. And the third thing is never stop believing. My faith is on that level. Yeah. You can't tell me something that I already know what God told me. You can't. Yeah. See, that's another thing too. You people quit what God told you. People, you know, people tell me what you know. You can't tell me something that God already told me. You can't treat me out of my position. I know who I am, and like I said, and I never worry about having to seat at a person table. I create my own table, and I say this is my motivation album. When you know who you are, nobody can tell you not. Be the one that's in position. Now people ask you for position. You know, it was all fun and game when they thought you needed them. They count you out. But now not funny no more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you keep applying that pressure. They focus on your mission, and the, rela the right relationship going to come to help you put some more to your craft, perfect your craft and your arsenal. And next thing you know, you you two or three people on your team. And you just grow and build from there. But I think uh, a lot of people... Uh, get devastated or get discouraged because they look at what other people are doing. If you stay in your own lane, you don't have to worry about no traffic. You stay in your stay in your own lane and see how can you get better. But I guarantee you, if you quit or you get discouraged or you keep trying to look at somebody else's table or you trying to go have a seat at somebody else's table because they got they got more food or whatever, it's not gonna work. God preparing your table. I'm just sitting back. Mm -hmm. You just put the camera on this dude. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Us, man. You, you Appreciate it. But now. You really, really in your own lane, because mm -hmm. uh, I know y'all heard him talking about he was in corporate. Now this, mm -hmm. this, this, this you full time. Yep, now. yep. And this, me so, and my wife, uh, company yeah. Gene Production. <laughs> yeah. You know, L uh, God is in control LLC. Let me tell you another thing. Let me tell y'all another thing. Y'all listen to me. Can I talk that talk? Let me talk that talk. Big dog. I will never stop. I came into this game speaking by God, and I'm gonna leave this game speaking by God. Oh, this. Everything is worth temporary, man. I ain't about the biggest bag. I ain't got, ain't about the biggest watch, necklace. None of this yeah. matter. My thing is, if I can save one person, one person. So that's what's gonna help me keep longevity in the game. I can tell you how to be a millionaire, but I, I prefer to teach how to be rich in the spirit. I can tell you how to go slap somebody, but I rather really tell you how to be that big dog and apply pressure. Will keep your hand to yourself. You know what I'm saying? I can yeah. teach how to how to. Uh, turn up every time, but I want to teach you how to not be tricked out your position. And the thing is, too, is sometimes people see how great you are doing, they want to control the narrative, and so they try to say, hey, I'll give you this here okay. to control what you're doing, but I can't go that way because I know who I am. So that's one thing I want to tell you, man. When you get into, when you getting great at what you do, never stop being who you are because people, not, people want to control the narrative or how you bring that heat. George, I hear you. That's cool, mm -hmm. but somebody might say you just walked away from your job. Mm -hmm. Like you walked away from a secure mm -hmm. income. Mm -hmm. You got a wife. You got three kids mm -hmm. at the crib. So, talk about you know that discussion you had. That what you first? I know you talked to God first. Mm -hmm. I know you talked to your wife. Mm -hmm. Then at some point, you had to make sure the money was still coming in. God told me back in April. Got I I, I I I left my job. I don't do nothing while I got confirmation and I. Lord, my witness, my wife can attest to everything I speak about. God told me back in April 2021 that my time is coming. God had I already had everything set up, so it made it even more easier to leave my job. And my, me and my wife, that's my best friend. You know, we 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 have to help together. We speak to God, we pray to God. We already know what's taking place. And I left my job, but I didn't leave God. That's the difference. See, a lot of people leave that job, but don't know God. You see what I'm saying? So I already knew. And let me tell you, let me tell you what happened. This is how you know there was God. So when I left my job, look at me now. It take people five, ten years. It's what eight million people on social media. Not everybody blow up. God people does. That's a difference. Yeah. The second thing is, I knew I was supposed to be doing what I was supposed to be doing because as soon as I left my job, in September, October, my wife got a forty-four percent increase on her job. Where they do that? Forty-four percent increase? I ain't never seen that. I mean, I've been in the corporate office, man. I, the highest I ever seen is seventeen percent. But my wife got a 44% increase. Yeah. Four plus four is eight. Eight mean new beginning. Talk that talk, George. Eight mean new beginning. People don't understand that. God will show you something intentionally to let you know you're on the right track. 
Don't listen to the naysayer. Don't listen to the enemy. The people are trying to say, hey, man, you make a bad decision. No. Remember why I told you. In Jeremiah 29, 11, God said, uh, I know the plan and thoughts I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not harm you, to give you prosperity and future full of hope. So I already know what God told me. I just got to make sure I do everything for 1 Corinthians 14, 40, decent order. And I've been doing that, and now I'm reaping the harvest tenfold, hundredfold, a thousandfold. And that's which allowed me to be where I'm at as a motivation speaker because God wanted me here. Continue to save me, many people's lives if possible. And it's just the beginning, man. Like, um, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm being in a position where I'm able to help more people to expand in what they want to do. Through me, they say, okay, because George did, I can too. So now you got, uh, that's awesome, by the way. Like I said, I, sure. I, don't, even need to, I, don't, need, I don't even need to be here. Let's <laughs> <laughs> turn, turn to the camera on this dude, let him know. But I know, all right, since you, since, since you left, mm -hmm. you, got, you got your own podcast. Mm -hmm. George White, the speaker show. All right. The motivational albums. Mm -hmm. uh, damn, I'm forgetting one thing. Two, no, I mean two, right? So no, I have no, I have three motivation albums. Yeah, three motivation. Okay. And three singles. I have my uh, George White the Speaker Show. Uh, I got over what three hundred seventy thousand followers on TikTok. I'm a two hundred k on Instagram. Um, uh, uh, but talk, on, talk about the motivation album though, like the CDs, because you know mm -hmm. most time people go on, you know, Apple Music or they go on the outlet. We looking for music, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. And I, I, I know that all people who are doing, but talk about when you got the you know the motivation like. When it hit, like, oh, damn, I want to do a motivational album. Mm -hmm. and, how, and how you kind of prep that, and how you prep your content for that. I just wanted people to have something to have easy access to. When they working out, taking the kids to school, and laying down in the bed, something they can meditate to. You know, uh, when, if, if you have something where it can help people be better, why not put it out? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's on every platform. Apple Music, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Tittle, everywhere, you know, and... I'm already at 175,000 streams on Apple Music. That's God. That's not man. That's God. And by saying that, I did the right thing. And I'm not done yet. Uh, by 2023, I'm planning on having four more motivation albums. And I want to. I want to be. I want each project to be different. I want. I want the project to touch their soul, their spirit, and you know, like I say, and just help people turn to that big dog. You know, help them step out that darkness and step into that light. You know, uh, a lot of people who, 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 who spiritually died, who, who died when they were 26, but they didn't physically get buried till 46. They are dying so they're living. So if my motivation album can help people come out that darkness and step into that light, I man, I'll put out 20 more albums. And I'm gonna talk that talk every time, big dog. How you adjusting knowing that, man, like your voice now, you ain't just, you ain't, you ain't just in the United States, man. Mm -hmm. Now, people know who George White is. They waking up in different mm -hmm. time zones. Mm -hmm. And they getting turned up in, in Europe, and you know Canada, mm -hmm. you know other countries. Like how, like how you dealing with that mentally, and just you know really just I would say I'm I'm saying fame because mm -hmm. now you walk through the airport, mm -hmm. people know me, and yeah. people 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 they know who you are now. Big dog, yeah, they know who you are. It, Tell about the first the first experience you was traveling and somebody came up to you and they recognized you. What it did? Man, listen, I was at the airport in uh, Tampa. And, you know, I can tell they recognize me. They kept staring. I'm like, hey, the person I with, my sister, I said, hey, look back to their staring. Said, she said, yeah. I said, man, they must recognize me. It just feel different. You know, people recognize, they see you before you see them, you know, because you don't know who I'll follow you. And and when I flew in today, it happened again. You know, it just, it feel good, you know, humble at the same time. But I just remember, man, just coming from nothing, man. Just uh, the hard work I, you know, I put in. I remember I was working and doing this at the same time driving an hour and 15 minutes to work and taking two hours to get back home. And I still get home, make a video and edit, you know, only sleeping three or four hours because I want it, man. Like, that's how bad I want it. I want it to be that voice, man, because I want it to be that voice because I didn't have that growing up. And I said, I know that God didn't allow me to change my life for no reason. He did it for a reason. So I can be better than I was yesterday, which allowed me to be who I am today. And I'm thankful because not, you know, I grew up sleeping on the floor, man. We grew up with roaches, you know, at poverty. No windows, you know, and shout out to my moms, man. Shout out to my uh, my tea lady, man. She never gave up on us. She did what she had to do for all of us, man. And 
she forever good, you know, my wife forever good, you know, we, you know, my sister, my brother, like, um, the skills and the gift, the abilities I had that God given me, man, I won't take for granted. I can't take for granted. And it's an honor to see people international listen to me, China, uh, Japan, Jamaica, uh, New England, Brazil, uh, United Kingdom. That's different, man. So I'm thankful. Well, you know, about it, you know, you about to get a lot mm -hmm. more than that because I'm gonna tell you what I witnessed today. I witnessed, you know, we 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 we, we did this relatively quick. We mm -hmm. talked last week, set it up, mm -hmm. got you out here, yeah. and it was your idea about the meet and greet. Mm -hmm. But like now, like people watch you on your page, you know, you get them excited to start their day. But now, bro, you just added a personal mm -hmm. touch. Mm -hmm. You just added Appreciate a personal it. touch to what you're doing. Appreciate it. What you respect. Like I told you, man, you had a, somebody, that, that girl, she drove from Winston-Salem to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. she, she didn't go to work. Mm -hmm. like she, For she real. Skipped she work. said it. Yep. She skipped work. And I'm going to be honest now. This is a real story. We had a dude mm -hmm. that walked up. Uh, shout out to shout out to my home. Let me give my man a shout yeah, out. Yeah. Shout out to my homeboy, Joshua Jackson. Follow him on Instagram at Joshua Grimes. Okay with a Z uh, and follow his gym at a fourth quarter performance, 40H for four. Um, we had to meet and greet my man's spot, mm -hmm. you know? So like you said, George all about helping people. So we had to meet and greet at my homeboy spot. People came to the gym, so it, it, it served everybody. Mm -hmm. But bro, today we had somebody come up. This dude, no lie, was on a spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. He, we walked, Walk. he started from Orlando, Florida. He said he walked into Dallas. He had a phone. He walked from the shopping cart. Mm -hmm. From Orlando to Atlanta yeah. to see me. And, and came up here to see this dude. Bro, do you understand? That dude stopped in the middle of his journey, journey. to come holler at you, bro. Yep. That's, I, <laughs> he know, man. I know you in the moment. I know you in the moment still. Probably when you get back to the room, you probably going to sit and think about it. You get back home and talk to your wife about it. That's different, that man. man walked, that man walked up to the gym with a shopping cart, bro. He did. And said, God told him to come see you. And we, and it's so crazy about it, me and you were sitting there, and he came in with like, uh, are you looking for somebody? He said, I'm looking for you. The way he said, yeah, I'm we, looking we, for you. We shook a little bit. Yeah, we were like, the first time we yeah, got nervous. Yeah, we were like, what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, I'm looking for you. And, you know, um, he started talking, man. He like, he told me he's on this spiritual journey. And, you know, he's doing what he doing, he been obedient, doing what God, you know, tell him to do. And that's different, y'all. And, I'm telling y'all, those been following me, it's a season of shift, and God is using His people. He putting people up front, and uh, and it dude was it dude was honored to be there, and a lot more people was honored to be there, and uh, you know that just to see how many people came today, just to drove drove an hour away or whatever, and walked from Orlando to to Atlanta. That's different, and you know I don't you don't see that very often, and people only do that for what's authentic, man. People. People know when when God got the got got his hands on you. So, brother, I salute you for coming. Peace and blessing on your life. Uh, I speak victory on your life, man. Thank you for showing up. Cause that really touched me. Cause we both was in shock. And we chopped it up probably by almost an hour. Yeah, you talked to me. I could talk to listen, I don't care. I don't know this cat. I would talk to anybody, man. And just being pure authentic because I'm being true to I am, man. I know where I came from, man. I know how to defeat the opposition. I know what adversity looks like. So I'm showing these cats, man, like if I can do it, they can do it too. And for that man to respect and honor me the way he did, I give praise to the most high. Cause God know he was doing. And he came today for a reason. And watch him. We gonna see him. Big dog. What we'll city you hitting next? Everybody's in the comments. Hey, it's a surprise. <laughs> then stay tuned, continue to follow me. You know, uh, uh, stay tuned. And I'm going to get off the topic real quick, man. I'm doing a lot more things, man, not only speaking, but I want to give a shout-out to all the brothers out here, everybody who's doing their thing, man. Uh, I came up here with, you know, with Lawrence, man. He got some powerful brothers that he connected with. They got a trucking company, you know. Uh, shout-out to them, man. He got his cameraman. Like, I love to see people successful, man. So I'm pretty sure Lawrence going to tag me in the Instagram and in the, uh, in the comments, in the bio or whatever. So, sure. but... <laughs> Lawrence got uh, a good heart, man. He got he got good people around him, man. I love to see what you're doing as an entrepreneur. I like to see what your 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 homeboy is doing as an entrepreneur, and also your, your, the, the gentleman today that let's borrow his facility, man, to do the meet and greet. And you don't find too many good people like that, so that's what's up, man. Nah, you would have done. Most people would have charged what you did. Right? Man, they, they facts. You know, 
But, but I know I know you ain't gonna do it though. That's why people gonna continue to mess with you because mm -hmm. you know you did, did all the strength. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right, y'all. So look, I'm about to ask George about it. He got four things you gonna get out of a George White video every day. Let's see if he got it. I'm gonna try my best to impersonate him. First one. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, listen. You know why? You know why I get to doing that. Mm -hmm. I'm, about to, mm -hmm. I'm about to talk that talk. I'm about to say, hey, I do that to get people going, like the anticipation yep. of it. All right. Big dog season. Yes, sir. You gonna give them that? Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. You know, just you know, cause you know, <laughs> when you, you branding yourself, yeah, and people know that that's that thing. You know, that's that thing that you, everybody walked in the gym today was like, big dog, they doing mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, tell me about the moment when you feel like, when you just felt like, I'm going with that. You know, I, I, I really started doing it. I, you know, I just got in the zone and I just, I forgot what video it was. And I just like, turn them up, big dog. And I just, it's just like affirmation. Like, it give it that, mm, at the end of the video, you know, people like, you know what? I, th that part get me turned up. I can because. I'm a big dog, okay. and, and it basically everybody can use the affirmation for themselves as well. All right. So, and you know, and my next door neighbors will call me big dog, so I start using. All right, these next two is kind of use uh, interchangeable. Turn them up, George. Turn. Talk to them, George. So, <laughs> if I feel like, hey, and why I just when I say turn them up, I want you all the way up, not a little bit. I want you all the way, all the way up. I want you to be all gas, no brakes. All gas, no brakes. Yeah, that's real. Yeah, that's real. And that's, you know, <laughs> and that's my brand. Listen, I'm a creator of Talk That Talk and Yeah, That's Real. So when people say, Yeah, That's Real, you see that's big dog. They say, That's me. So, you know, I'm. So how you figure out them was your, them was, you know, when people, you know, when, when we talk, people listen to somebody. That's like, that's your trade monster mm -hmm. slogan. Like, how you know them was the ones? You just trial and error or, you know, feedback from people? You so, hear people saying it or what? I've been saying Yeah, That's Real since 2018. And I started saying uh, Talk That Talk. Probably at the end of 2021, and I started develop when I start to really tap into that big dog energy, man. I just start letting loose and being who I am, you know, and it just came. And I loved it, I, and I just rock with it, you know. I look like I'm talking to the third person. People be coming at who? Who is George? Who are you talking about? Oh, you talking about yourself? <laughs> talk to that talk, George. You know, and it's the uh, when I make the video, it's the pause and the, the you can feel the anointing on me. I'm looking right at the camera, man. And you see, sometimes you see the sweat. I'm like, hey, boom, boom, boom. Talk that talk, George. You know, and just get into it, man. That would get people, you know, uh, going. And, they, you know, I love making great content for the people and help them transition, man. So I appreciate y'all. Salute, big dog. You feel like I know the answer to this, but I'm just going to ask it. It ain't an act, is it? This you? You know, that's something made hey, up, or you know, this me all the way. You get that coffee, get that coffee in you at five a.m. It's already, it's already. There. Either or, coffee or not, this is who I am. You know, uh, <laughs> my wife would say, "Man, this, you know, this is who I am." You know, uh, I feel, I feel better to be able to be myself and not work with nobody. I get to be who I am, the big dog, talk that talk, and um, you're gonna see more of it, man. You're gonna see. I love being authentic, you know. Nobody can change me uh, how the way I do things. Only God can. And as long as I keep changing people's life, I'm good, man. As long as God said, job well done, my faithful servant, I'm good. Talk that talk, George. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's, be let's, 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 let's loosen up a little bit. You from Dallas. Most of the, you know, it was crazy. I know y'all America's team and all that. But most of the people who I meet that's Dallas Cowboys fans, they ain't even from Dallas. But you from but you from Dallas. So I'm not from Dallas. Uh, I mean I'm from Palestine. Well you from Texas. I'm you from, from Texas. You from Texas. Yeah. Well you live in Dallas now, you from Texas. Yeah, I've been Dallas since 2012. Y'all know y'all, bro. I got a homeboy. He from Brooklyn, New York. Mm -hmm. He is a, I'm talking about diehard Cal uh Callis. Diehard Cowboys fan. What is it about them that just I mean, I know you live there, but what is it about y'all that just make y'all just feel like y'all just gonna win the Super Bowl every Freaking! It don't matter what y'all do. Cause every year, y'all think y'all gonna win the Super Bowl because we big dogs. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> we the American team. We big dogs, huh? and every year is gonna be the year until we win it. Huh? Every year is gonna be the year until we win it. Since nineteen ninety what? Hey, it gonna be all the way. Gonna be going to all the way to two thousand fifty until we win it. We oh, the American man. team. You know, I just I grew up on <laughs> these people. Are ridiculous, hey. man! Like he really, he listen, really believe this though. Listen, he it, it might, it might be this year. I'm thinking it's gonna be this year. Huh? I mean, this, you know, this year is probably a Odell Beckham coming. Shout out to Odell. I know he coming. 
this is probably yeah. this actually is a probably more realistic, more realistic year that you know I think you actually got a shot to make it. But y'all who think y'all gonna make it every year? Listen, we might be like Drake back to back. We're gonna win this year no. and win it next year. <laughs> so, you know. You know what, man? I wish I wish Stephen A. Smith was here right now. He'd, oh my he'd goodness! I wish Michael Irvin was here right now. Huh? Oh yeah, he can give it to me too. <laughs> yeah. he'd, be, hey, he'd probably be to beat me up, jumping yeah. across the couch and everything. <laughs> man, but, all right. So I mean, let's talk about it though, man. Y'all look, y'all. Uh, Dak Prescott got hurt. Cooper Rush came in. And did his thing. He did an outstanding job. Yes, sir. And he did more than just keep y'all afloat. Mm-hmm. Y'all went three and one with him. No, we went like four and four, one. Three, one three and one, four and one, one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the defense, don't forget the defense. Oh, yeah, everybody def- know yeah. that. If you're watching this, yeah, everybody know y'all mm-hmm. defense solid, man. Mm-hmm. Y'all got a, a, you know, dude, young dude coming off the edge. Mm-hmm. They, they compare him to Lawrence Taylor. Mm-hmm. Uh, Michael Parsons, you know, he's Charles Parsons. I mean, almost, you know, you still got Demarcus Lawrence. Yep. Linebacking core, Van Der Esch still playing yep. well. Um, we got some, we got some, we mean, got some dogs. Got, uh, what's it, Diggs out on the corner. Yep. I mean, y'all got players everywhere, and y'all got you know y'all receiving cores getting mm-hmm. healthy. Let's say y'all do get Odell, cause you you saying he coming. I, I, feel I like mean, he, you already spoke. You said he coming. I think he coming. He follows your page and he coming. I right? think he coming. I, I got faith that he coming. Huh? I got faith that you he talk coming. Talk to him. You go send him a DM. No, I ain't got to. I, I believe that he you coming. <laughs> Listen, I ain't got to talk to him. I believe that Odell coming. I believe when Odell come, that's gonna really. We got C.D. Lamb. We got Michael Gallup. And we got uh, OBJ. That's gonna really open up the field. You don't have to pick somebody to double. You put Odell Beck on the slot, he eating everybody up. Yeah. So I feel like, and we got Dak Prescott, then we got uh, TP, we got Pollard, we got Ezekiel Elliott, so we can uh, run oh, it. Oh, pump the brakes right yeah. there. Yeah. You know, boy Tony Pollard looking at, hey, yeah. he's super explosive yeah. right now to the point. Yeah. His grumblings, like the people already, you know, they, TP, yep. Zeke. So Tony Pollard be starting. Zeke been the bell cow for a little while. You know, he been injured a little bit. Um, uh, Probably not the exact same juice he has. I mean, he's a running back position, man. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of hits mm-hmm. he taking. He runs so hard. Mm-hmm. Like, what they what they saying in Texas right now? They like is, they love Listen, both. We, we they love, love both. Y'all don't care who about that. Listen, long we winning. Okay, Zeke Elliott. Zeke Elliott ran for 90 some yards. But Zeke Elliott still got it. Well, we got yeah. a two town on back. Like, Pollard can do certain things. Ezekiel Elliott can do a certain thing. He can still run hard. He can still he he yeah, he can block real good. You know, uh, TP. You know, he got like that explosive, burst, man. explosive. He got that burst, and we, we I feel like we we become well rounded as an offense. And I feel like when OBJ come to the Cowboy, it's gonna make us more solidified as a team. And I feel like the Eagles ain't got nothing for us. Oh, so and we already we, <laughs> we didn't even talk about we heading to the Super Bowl. I'm gonna get my okay. tickets now. I'm gonna ask you, you think I should have kept Amari Cooper? I think or you, or you just trust Jerry Jones that much that whatever move he No, I, I feel like uh I like the Amari Cooper. I did. Uh he excellent running route. I feel like we should have kept him, but you know, we didn't. We're gonna take what we got and you know, and fix the pieces or whatever. But I, I wish we could have kept him. Uh I like Amari Cooper. I did, man. You been to a game this year? Huh? You been to a game this year? Not yet. I haven't been to a game yet. What you waiting on? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I look like thing is I'm the type of person I like sitting. You like sitting at home and watch it like I want to relax, you know, and move through the room. But um, I ain't missing no game though. Um, and Sunday felt funny because the Cowboy played on Thursday and nobody was talking on you know on the social media because Cowboy didn't play on Sunday. You see, Cowboys American team. Every time when Cowboy play on Sunday, everybody got to say something. So you see a big difference. I mean, y'all do move. Y'all got a whole, you know, Michael Irvin got a whole yeah. segment. Yeah, First take Monday is about what y'all do. Yep, yep. So, shout out to them Cowboys. Super Bowl champs. Man. Let's get it. Big dogs. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get off of them because hey, he ain't going to say nothing bad about these nope. folks. Nothing. You know he ain't going to say nothing bad you know about it. these people. All right. Um, I will say, let's keep, nah, let's keep it on. Who your favorite Dallas Cowboy of all time? Uh, Deion Sanders. Oh, that's the easy answer. I can't even argue mm-hmm. with you about that. All right, Sanders, let's go top. Let's go top five. Because that's, Deion, that's just, that's that's a lot then. So I got Deion Sanders. I got uh, Emmitt Smith, uh, Michael Irvin, Troy Aitman, and uh, mm, <sighs> I'm trying. That, even though it might have been the best, this, this is what I like. I liked it. Hold on, Deion Sanders, Troy Aitman, Emmitt Smith, Michael Irvin. Let's see. Let's see if you show any D lineman love. Any love, they got to have some good ones. They did. 
I'm more of an offense type of guy. I can tell Roy you. Williams, Roy Williams, Roy Williams, Roy Williams, Roy Williams, he hit. Man, I, I forgot about him. I like Roy Williams. Williams. I'm going to put Roy that. Williams. I, I, oh, I forgot Woodson, too. Dang, I got to take uh, uh, out. <laughs> he said I got to take out. <laughs> well, I'm going to take Roy Williams because Roy Williams, I'm 31. He's a hit, man. Like, yeah. I like Roy Williams, man. I was hoping he was going to add DeMarcus Ware because I. I forgot about DeMarcus Ware, too. Come off the edge. But I was more, like, I was more excited. Like, I looked at Roy Williams like Brian Dawkins. Yeah. You know, Roy Williams, he wasn't good at coverage, but he can come down here and hit you. So, I like Roy Williams, man. Even though he went to Oklahoma? Yeah, I like Oklahoma. Oh, you do? AJ Pizza went there. Like, okay. yeah, I like Oklahoma. I mean, I love, I love Mac him, and man. Kelly went there. We like, everybody, a lot of people in East Texas went to Oklahoma. Okay, all right. I'm just saying, you know, mm-hmm. you straight Texas. Yeah. East Texas. I know, I've right. been to Oklahoma. Huh? I've been to Oklahoma football. I like Oklahoma and, and college basketball. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold mm-hmm. on. So, you you a Cowboys fan, Texas through and through. All these schools, you gonna tell me you like Oklahoma? I've been not Baylor, not TCU. I've been not, uh, te- not Texas. My favorite college football team been uh, Oklahoma since Adrian Peterson uh, went there. I've been watching Oklahoma ever since, even yeah. with Malcolm Kelly. Listen, but he from Houston though. You who, no, he's from Longview. Longview. He from uh, Malcolm Kelly from Longview, uh, Texas, and uh, that's by Tyler. But I've been, uh, I've been, I've been like football. It's been Oklahoma, and then. Uh, College basketball been Duke. I've been watching Duke for a while, man. I'm trying to get the dude to say something bad about a team. He like, he ain't nah, going to say, I ain't gonna, ain't gonna yeah, say nothing. Nah, I can't do it, man. I can't do it. He ain't going to say nothing. I can't do it, man. But Oklahoma at the same, though. I miss uh, old Oklahoma. So, what you mean Bob Stoop. You know, you can, the coach is different. You know, uh, different. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a new era of football. But when Bob Stoop was there, I, I like him terribly, man. I love the pause he had. That it was instilled to his player. You can see the difference. With George White gonna be this this time next year? <laughs> so stay tuned, stay tuned. Watch a guy is doing a lot of things, man. Uh, nah, I just pray there'll be a lot more, you know, that what God want me to have. So, uh, man, I uh, I pray that I'm where what God want me to be, man, for me, and my family, and for the world. Yeah, yeah, you have. I can tell you, what I'm gonna be. I'm gonna let it out of the bag now. What's that? I'm be on your undercard, bro. A- hey, he claim it. You see That's a speaking it. engagement, and you see George White, the speaker. Yeah, you gonna see be there. Ryan and Eve. You gonna see Lawrence Sidbury right Jr. Mm-hmm. Y'all call me Sid Jr. Though, but look, that's a wrap. Another episode of the Zena Podcast in the books, my brother. Turn George. him up, George. Appreciate you spending your time. <laughs> Appreciate with it, us. brother. Appreciate you giving Big me dog. the first interview, bro. Appreciate it. No, thank you for having me, man. This listen. Y'all be sure to subscribe, go like, ring the bell. Take, take over for me, bro. Gotta yeah. go tell them, tell them. Hey, turn them up, man. This is, hey, listen. This uh, is this going to be one of the top podcasts, man. If you haven't subscribed, if you haven't tapped in now yet, tap in right now. The big dog. The big dog is here. Be sure to subscribe. Much love, y'all. See you, turn them up, George. Be gone. Yeah, that's real. <laughs>